How do you scale a business from one level to the next? That's the question that we're talking about today. I will go into how we did it with Epic Gardening, but I'm going to also talk about the high level sort of first principle of the whole thing. So the first thing you have to think about if you do have a business, first of all, if, if, if it's your first business and you're just starting it out, I wouldn't worry too much about scale. I'd much more worry about just running a good business and actually like learning fundamental business principles, making it work. However, let's just take the example of a barber. Let's say you're a barber and you're going to, uh, you're working at someone else's shop and you're paying a booth rent and then you're just cutting hair. Well, how do you scale that business? The only real way is to cut more people's hair per day or work more days or potentially sell more services to the people you're cutting the hair. So maybe you do a little beard trim or you do a shave or whatever the case may be. That's really the only way you can scale that. So if you do that forever, you're stuck at that level. That's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of people who they like that level of business. It affords them a great lifestyle and then they're, they're good to go. In some ways, I envy that. It's not the way my brain works. Now, if you did want to scale that, what you would do is what my barber did, and he owns his own shop. So he started his business, probably formed an LLC, started a shop, leased it out. Now he cuts hair in one booth, and he has four other barbers paying a booth rent. And so let's say he's making, what, 300 bucks a month or something off of those booths. So he's making 1200 bucks on top of what he cuts. So he's plus about $15,000 a year on that. I don't know if that's exactly how that model works, but you're getting what I'm getting at. You have to do a new business model in order to scale that particular business that we're talking about. Now, let's, for the sake of exercise, how would you scale that one even further? What you do is you'd open another barber shop, and from there, you would actually have that whole thing rented out, so you wouldn't be cutting hair over there. It would just be all other barbers. Now, that would be another way to do it, because now you have another spot, and as long as your expenses are lower than the income you're taking in for the time you're putting in, Voila, you have a bigger business that reaches more people. And that's really what scale is. Scale is how do you reach more people with your product or service? And every business requires sort of a different way of doing that. Now with Epic Gardening, it's kind of interesting because the way I've achieved scale, first of all, it's digital. So that helps a lot. You'll find in all these business models, digital is way easier to achieve scale because you're dealing with bits and not atoms. You're not out in the world moving little particles around your body. You're not moving, you know, people around and people don't have to come into the store and all that. You can create things that are consumed wherever that human being is and they can exchange money for a good or a service. So a a birdie's raised bed, for example, or they can exchange, if I was to do a course, they could exchange money for the course just by looking at the videos and checking it out. So how did I do it? Well, the first thing I did is I started with a blog. So back then, it was 2013, blogs were all the rage. Actually, they were even maybe coming out of their, their zenith, but at that point, still it was viable to do a blog. Still is, but easier back then. So I did the blog. Now the blog was sort of my core, call it the, the wheel, the hub of the wheel. Everything else was the spoke. And after that, I said, well, this is text and images. Maybe some people want to watch videos about gardening. So I started the YouTube channel. But it's hard to start a YouTube channel. Even back then, it was hard to start a YouTube channel. So how do you get people to watch it besides the idea of just making good content, which I just made a video on? You have to make good content. But what you need to do is every asset you have in your business, you should see if it can help you build the next asset. And so I said, okay, well, what are the most popular pages people are coming to? Turned out it was my hydroponics tutorials. That's what I started out in. And so I made videos, little animated videos on the hydroponic tutorials, put them on the website, and that launched the YouTube channel. So now people didn't have to find it on YouTube. They could find it on my website and go, oh, this guy has a YouTube channel too. Boom, click over, subscribe to that. Now when the podcast came out, what did I do? Same exact thing. I just put like maybe the first 100 episodes were the most popular blog articles or, or YouTube videos. And then of course I had the blog and the YouTube at that point. So then I could say, hey, everyone who watches the blog and the YouTube channel, just check out the podcast, right? Same idea, Instagram, these things, these TikTok, all these different things, somewhat similar idea. Now there's a whole slew of videos I could do on a per platform basis as far as like platform growth, platform decline, platform adoption, you know, the adoption curve of platforms, all that kind of stuff is a, a separate video. But for the purposes of scale, that's one way I scaled the content. Now, scale applies to all forms of the business. Every, every sort of piece of a business, you need to scale when you're growing the company. So, you know, content had to scale, like I'm just talking about, but also I couldn't 
write and record and record podcasts and videos. I couldn't do all that just me. So I needed to get help. And so then you scale with people. So you really can scale with digital reach is what I did. You can scale with human beings. So you have to hire to, and create versions of yourself in a, in a sense, not really, but you know, hopefully they're better than you at the thing that you're hiring them for. And then from there, process process how if you know that the way you're doing a certain thing make it a video or an article or you know cutting a hair or marketing something if you know that works create a process around it and ideally either automate it help help figure out how to automate it with technology or train someone that can do it in your stead so you don't have to do that thing and so when you achieve scale I'm not like some master of scale, certainly compared to the greats out there, like the, these big platforms that I'm on, right? That, that's the true level of scale, you know, but, but as far as reaching people, we're doing pretty well at Epic Gardening. So the way you have to think about it is, what do you have at your disposal? What assets do you have? What people do you have? And what processes do you have that you know work? Deploy all of those and sort of see how those play out. So for example, I knew that when I create a YouTube video, if I make a really, really good one, it'll stand the test of time and it'll be viewed for years and years and years. So basically think about it. If I make that ginger video I made a long time ago, which is right there actually, funnily enough, I'll harvest it pretty soon. If I make that video and it gets 7 million views, which it's at, at now, I basically, in that two hours of time of my life a couple years back or last year, I basically digitized myself and replicated myself by however many times that video gets viewed. That's why content to me is so powerful. You can basically, there's, there's versions of me just sort of living online. I would dare to say that at this point in time, someone's pretty much always watching or listening to something that we've put out as a company. You know, certainly my voice on, on audio or video, but also just the words that our team has, has written on the blog, right? Or some old video on TikTok that pops up or some magazine article that we were in or something like that. And so that's one way to achieve scale. Digital content really, really does it. It's crazy to think about how many people might just be watching something we've made at this point right now as you're watching this. Uh, so that's really interesting. Now, there's other ways to think about it, and I'll probably do more videos on this. So guys, if you're if you're watching and you actually like this type of content, which I think it's, it's I'm purposely not making it YouTube-y, I'm purposely not making it clickbaity, I'm purposely not making it sort of dynamically interesting i'm just sitting here holding a phone because the people who really want this info will probably dig to get it and those are the ones who i think should be rewarded and actually get this info so drop in the comments if you want a specific thing i've mentioned to really be expanded upon into its full video i mean we could talk about platform adoption we could talk about um you know how, how to sort of surf the waves of, of digital content we could talk about hiring people we could talk about creating processes, automations, my favorite apps, like all that kind of stuff we could talk about. So this is the eve of my 34th birthday. I have a couple tropical fruits. I'm going to eat here in the backyard. It's a weirdly sort of gloomy August, kind of weird. Anyways, good luck, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace out.